Drugs. I'm not even kidding. Neptune is associated with deception, illusion and all kinds of pseudo-realities. But it also represents our creativity and imagination and psychic powers. Don't do drugs. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elena and today we go into the third part of my Astrology 101 series. The first and second part are already up on my channel <laughs> and I will link the playlist here for you. Like there I give a broad overview about astrology in general and what's included in your birth chart. And I'll introduce you to zodiac signs and their qualities and their modalities. The goal of this series is for you to not only get an understanding of how the planets and zodiacs and houses come together on the night sky, but also for you to be able to read and understand your every aspect of the birth chart and how it can help you out in life. In today's video, our topic are the planets. Or let's call them celestial bodies because the sun and moon and aren't really planets but a star and a moon and pluto well i never accepted not to be a planet because what the hell wouldn't it be of course i could be biased because pluto rules scorpio and i'm scorpio but anyways let's just get started so i covered the big three shortly in my first astrology video the sun the moon and rising sign but today i will explain to you exactly what those two bodies stand for and the rising sign slash ascendant i will cover another time together with the other three angles and stuff like lilith and chiron and the north and the south node basically we'll have two videos about celestial bodies so we already know that the birth chart is a snapshot of the sky from the time of your birth it captures the exact position of each celestial body and which constellation slash sign they occupied when you were born. We have so-called inner planets, um, including the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus and Mars that directly impact our personalities and day-to-day -day life, and the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. They are on the other side of the asteroid belt, so a lot farther away from us, and they move much slower. They influence much larger life themes also, or um, experiences that may be reflected throughout several generations even. Each plant is equivalent to a sign, a sign that it governs. So the sign takes on attributes associated with the themes of a planet it's ruled by. For example, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, and Pluto is all about transformation. And Scorpio is a very transformative sign, not only because it's a water sign, but Scorpio placements are also known for extremes and the tendency to embrace all aspects of self, so to take on transformation. If a planet is in its equivalent sign in your birth chart, for example your Mercury is in Gemini, it means that this aspect, the function this celestial body has, feels very clear and comfortable in its expression for you. It's a very supporting energy, basically, like being fully in your element when it comes to this aspect in your life. But let's talk about those aspects or functions in this case. Starting with the Sun, as our first inner planet, the Sun is often associated with our ego self, the very core of our being, but also our way to assert ourselves. It's not much of a surprise that the equivalent sign to the Sun is Leo. It's a general expression of who we are as a person, but you know, it's general. So just at home, like a basic personality in our basic preferences. Preference. When we are asked about um, our sign, people usually want to know your sun sign only. But the problem with that, as you may see, is that it's so general. It's just the tip of the iceberg. The moon, also not a planet, is all about our inner experience, our emotions and our subconscious. You could say it influences the way we feel. The moon has a gravitational pull, so it's responsible for the change of the tides and the climate. It also has an effect on our sense of rhythm, our adaptability to change and our sense of time and timing. The moon is equivalent to the sign Cancer because it's the most sensitive emotional water sign, I guess. Mercury. If you are at the years of the limb by Rick Riordan, you know that Mercury was named after a special Roman deity who was the messenger of the gods. So Mercury deals with communication, the written and spoken word, common sense, reason and rationality. Mercury governs both Gemini and Virgo, you know, because Gemini is very chatty and Virgo is very 
analytical. You often hear people who are into astrology whine about Mercury retrogrades, like we just had one. I think it ended yesterday or the day before that. <laughs> we talk about retrogrades and the movements of the planets and transits and stuff like that soon. For now, it's just um, enough to be aware of it. Moving on to Venus, also named after a certain Roman goddess, the, the beautiful one, you know, who everyone finds annoying. So is Venus a planet? Just kidding. Venus gives us a sense of beauty, harmony, pleasure, and of course it's all about love and relationships. Our Venus sign represents our idealized perception of love and has an influence on the arts and cultures we are interested in. Venus governs Libra and Taurus, who each represent a different side of Venus's expression. I, the symbol of Libra is literally scale, right? So Libra placements thrive in harmony and balance, and they're the most flirtatious people you'll ever meet. I already covered that. <laughs> like, for real, just make up your mind already, please. And Taurus placements are very sensual. They love everything that gives them pleasure, like food and art and fresh bed sheets. Mars represents the energy and drive of a person. It's the fire under our ass. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> our passion, determination, and aggression. Mars is named after the Roman god of war and also known as the warrior of the zodiac. It governs the sign Aries and manifests often in situations where we need impulsive action, like during a project last minute or um, running to get a flight or running to, uh, <laughs> you know, to get an important meeting. The way we deal with those situations, that's our Mars placements coming through. Now we're talking about the outer planets, starting with Jupiter, the biggest planet in our solar system, you know, the king of the gods. <laughs> Jupiter represents our search for individual meaning and purpose. It governs expansion, encouraging us to broaden our horizons, like philosophically, spiritually, academically, you know, edu education-wise. It also symbolizes good fortune and abundance, so it's a lucky planet. And it's equivalent to Sagittarius. Moving on to Saturn, this planet shows us how we experience reality, what laws and rules we obey, and where we meet resistance and restrictions. You could say Saturn represents our work ethic. It's rather unemotional and focused on our abilities to work hard, achieve, resist and persist. If you want to know about the common challenges you will face in life, take a good look at Saturn in your chart. The equivalent sign is Capricorn, of course, our most ambitious hard little worker in the zodiac. Uranus. Uranus is a bit unusual, you know? It was the first planet discovered by a telescope and the only one named after a Greek deity and not a Roman one. And as such, Uranus tells us a lot about our intuition, inspiration and insight. Our openness to you know, everything new and unknown. And naturally, Uranus rules Aquarius, who was also always wanting to be the odd one out, no pun intended, and loves to rebel. So is Uranus about innovation, rebellion, technology, and groundbreaking change. And it hates rules, and it's going to call you out on everything that you question. And going to question. The planet Neptune, one of my favorites, was named after Neptune, <laughs> cut of the sea. Quite fittingly, it's all about the magical vastness of the spiritual unknown, the intersection between fantasy and reality, basically. Drugs. Like, I'm not even kidding. Neptune is associated with deception, illusion, and all kinds of pseudo-realities. But it also represents our creativity and imagination and our psychic powers. D don't do drugs. See, the thing about Neptune is that it can give us insight into the greatest and most colorful aspects of mind and existence itself, but it can turn into a form of delusion and escapism very quickly. The sign equivalent to Neptune is Pisces. And last but not least, Pluto. Pluto represents our take on power in every form, personal and non-personal. It symbolizes transformation, destruction and regeneration. It basically tells us how we meet the dark, demonic and magical, how we deal with radical change and our ability to transform. Pluto is named after the god of the underworld and its power is rooted in the darkness. It encourages us to let go of our past and manifest change by embracing our shadow. And it will scorpio, you, obviously. <laughs> so now you know about the inner and outer planets and what they symbolize in your birth chart. Next time we'll be talking about the rest of the celestial bodies in your chart and 
the four angles like your rising sign for example. If you found this video insightful and helpful, I would be happy if you smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on the series and on the next parts in the series. <laughs> Go check out the other things that I do on YouTube. Like uh, I'm doing music and I talk about spiritual stuff a lot and I do tarot readings on, on Saturday. So <laughs> yeah, for now, I wish you a wonderful day and hopefully we see each other soon.